All right. So one of the questions I've been asked several times over the last uh, few years, uh, when I say several times, it's a question that seems to uh, come up a lot, actually. And that is, do I have a good ACOS? Am I doing a good job on my paid ad campaigns? Because, you know, we always hear all these kind of shiny objects, people, you know, flashing in the uh, Facebook groups. Hey, look at my 5% ACOS. Da, 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 da. Well, there's probably more information they're not telling you. Like it's like branded keywords um, or like some extenuating circumstance. So what I think is really important to do is just get a baseline of what is a profitable ACOS for you. Uh, because a lot of this stuff is really going to come down to depends, but then also, um, in this world of, uh, Amazon PPC, a lot of people share, I think a lot of things that in other businesses people wouldn't, and that's things like tactics and strategies, uh, and philosophies and ideas. And people are very, uh, forthcoming with a lot of information, but you know, there's a couple of things people don't talk a lot about and that's, um, uh, the product they sell and then, you know, the bottom line numbers. So to get into some of the more financial parts of things, I'm really excited to get into this. So if you stick around to the end, uh, we will have shown you how you can make sure that you are set up for profitability as well as also show you a tool, which I think is pretty cool, that will walk you through how you can uh, actually get a comparison of similar products to yours, because not everybody gets that opportunity to know what your competition uh, in your subcategory, your niche, whatever that case is, uh, what their products look like. So let's just walk through real quick as a uh, refresher. So again, you might be saying to yourself, mm, do I have a good ACOS? Do I not? Um, well, let's talk about how you even figure out what would be your break even ACOS. And so to get your break even ACOS, you got to know what are your margins? What are your numbers? So let's just give an example here. So let's say you're selling a product for $20. So that's your price. And so think of it almost like a pie chart. So we're going to go back and forth between these uh, two uh, sides here. So the green circle is going to be our selling price. So that, that is our pie. So if you think about it, we're gonna have to slice it up with a bunch of different costs. So just as a pizza, or a apple pie, however you prefer to look at it, you know, it's going to be sliced up a certain way. Usually with pizza and pies, we tend to slice it kind of equally, but uh, with margins and things like that, we don't do it equally. So we got to know our margins and know our numbers. So let's just say in most categories, it's probably going to be a 15% referral fee. So I know there's some categories, maybe you're 12 or some other uh, circumstance, but you can just follow along the logic here. So let's just say 15% referral fee. So on a $20 price, uh, that's three bucks. So about 15% ish. Um, hopefully my, uh, proportionality is, uh, at least in the ballpark of being correct. Feel free to comment down below. Um, and then you've got your FBA fee. So the cost of getting it to the customer. Now, if you're doing FBM, that's going to be your price to ship it to the customer. So whatever that cost is for you, you know, the top line is the revenue coming in. And then now we're starting to subtract out our cost. So let's say 490 FBA fee. Now then that's going to take out uh, roughly a quarter in our example of the selling price. Then we've got $5 going to cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold, that's gonna, cost of goods sold is basically the cost of your product. And so think of, you know, the product cost, the getting it sh shipped to you, basically we'll call it your landed cost. We'll say that in this case, it's about a quarter of the uh, selling price uh, might be different. We're all a little different, but we're just going to follow along this logic. Now, oftentimes we stop there because we say, oh, your, your Amazon costs and you got these other costs like cost of goods sold, but we forget about there's usually other little things we forget of like the cost that, of what you pay to get it shipped into Amazon's warehouse. Um, maybe the inventory costs, hopefully you're not paying long-term storage fees because it's been sitting there for a year, but you know, even if it's there for, you know, two, three months, you're still paying on average per unit, a certain amount. Um, so then maybe you have to pay labels or put a poly bag. So something there's might be some other additional costs that aren't in these other buckets. So let's just say that's 50 cents. Now in my example here, that's about $13 and 40 cents of costs, which means we've got six sixty in margin, which is a 33% in relative terms. So this little sliver here is roughly more than a quarter. So it's 33% um, in our example here. So you might be saying to yourself, okay, but 
is that good? Well, the good news is when you're the business owner, you can go back and you can take a look at these numbers and say, what can I control? What are some things I could look at? So you can't do much about the referral rate. So you can potentially raise your price. And so that means you have a bigger pie. So that 15% will be consistently 15%. So if you have a bigger pie, they just get a bigger referral amount, but it's still going to be 15%. Now the FBA fee would likely remain consistent. Now with that FBA fee, let's just say maybe you've got a product that's like just above a pound. So this, in the time I'm recording this, it's about a pound, a little bit over a pound. Maybe you want to look at is, uh, is the weight right? Or maybe you want to go back to the supplier and say the weight is correct. And it is above a pound. Like let's say it's a pound and two ounces. Is there anything you can do to shave off some weight on the product or the packaging? Uh, maybe if it's oversized and it's just slightly more on the oversized, can you make it just a little smaller? It's still the product itself meets the customer's expectations, but the packaging is smaller. Maybe the packaging um, is lighter, something along those lines. Now, of course, it's not damaging the product or whatever the case is. You still want to have quality, but those are things that you could potentially look at as a possibility. Or your cost of goods sold. Maybe you can uh, look at your um, look at your, uh, prices you're paying with your factory. What are you paying for shipping? You know, if you started purchasing larger amounts, would that save you money? Um, uh, so those are things to think about. Um, so that would take you into cost of goods sold. Now I know you can get into a whole other, you know, idea of cash flow if you're buying too much at once, but let's just keep this relatively simple that we're talking about what we can control. And maybe some of these miscellaneous items are things you can control. Um, Maybe you have less expensive ways to get it into Amazon or something like that. So you just as a business owner, we're constantly looking at, should I raise my price? And then these other things, because all those things I mentioned, if you decrease your cost or if you raise your price, then that theoretically should make it so that your margin is larger. So then maybe instead of a 33% break even a cost, maybe you can get up to a 37% break even a cost on your product or a 40% or 45% or whatever the case is. So whatever you can do to get a higher a cost, because essentially advertising comes out of here. So your margin, remember, that's where your advertising is coming out of. So that's that pie that's left over. If it's 25% ACOS, now you've got 8% left. Now, granted, that could still help with organic sales and all these other factors. So I wouldn't get too worried about, um, especially initially, uh, whether or not your ACOS is good. But you, let's say you're a little bit more seasoned and you're wondering, okay, but you've explained everything you explained is very basic, Kevin. So do I have a good ACOS? Well, that's a great question. So um, I've used a variety of tools over the years um, to do a variety of different things in my uh, uh, Amazon journey. And right now with paid ads, I tend to use bulk upload spreadsheets. But if you're a spreadsheet nerd like me, it can be fun. Uh, and coming up with like different formulas and templates and, you know, V lookups and uh, pivot tables and formulas and all this fun stuff. Uh, but if you're not, it's not your thing or you just want to compare to others, like, again, how do you know? So I used to use uh, one of the products I used to use um, for advertising campaigns with Celex. And so it's a good, reputable company. And they came to me actually with something I think is pretty cool. And they're calling it their benchmarker tool. And I'm going to show you this. And so what it does is basically it allows you to see for something similar in your category, um, what your, uh, what you compare to. So this is the part that's hard. Like you can do all these things you can control, but like, what is it compared to others in your niche? Am I paying too much for things, you know, compared to others? Do I have too many campaigns or whatever? I mean, there's a lot of different philosophies in this, but sometimes it's just fun understanding what are what are the things going on behind the scenes with others. And so let me show you this here real quick. I think this is pretty cool. So um, so this is what the tool comes back looking like. And the crazy thing is this is free. Um, and I'll show you how you can sign up for it here in just a moment. Um, but basically, you can scroll down here and it shows you like your impressions for your funnel, your return on investment compares to others in your niche. And so basically it's going to show you, let's say your products, um, how that a cost compares to others. Don't get too wrapped up in their, uh, color coding here. It's more just to stick out at you, whether it's good or not. Um, but what they're really, I think is interesting is they, they show you compared to, 
what the benchmarks are for others in your niche. And so, um, so they're saying for this category, the ACOS benchmark is about 20%. And for this one, it's 25%. And so what they're really doing is, so if you see here, like this is home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, uh, cutlery and knife accessories. And this one is like pet supplies, da, 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 da. So basically what they're trying to do, because they, the way they explained it is they've got about $500 million a year in ad spend that goes through their tools. So they get to see that it's all kinds of different categories. And so they get a sense of what is good a cost, what's not a good a cost, what's good click through rates, conversion rate and all that. So you can see like, okay, this is a, uh, um, conversion rate on this product is, uh, benchmark is 6.6%. I think that could be a lot higher. Um, so, you know, at least you can see compared to others in your niche, what's that like? Or maybe your uh, click through rate, you know? Um, so there's all these different things you can look at. And they also I compare, which I think is really kind of interesting is, you know, how many ad groups you have per campaign, uh, ASINs uh, per ad group, keywords per ad group. Um, they give you an overall score. Uh, mine was a similar score to that. I think I got a 55. So um, wasn't so hot, but I think a lot of it had to do with my ACOS. They said it was high. I was, I'm actually comfortable with my ACOS, but it did have me questioning my ACOS. Like, should I be spending as much on some as broad of keywords as I am spending money on? So it, it, it did raise some good questions for me. Uh, they do compare your uh, cost per click. So like if you're looking at this and your A cost was a little higher than the benchmark, but your uh, cost per click is higher than what others are paying on average from what they're seeing, take everything a little bit of a grain of salt, but at least points you in the right direction. Like, okay, so they are doing pretty well with their click through rate and the conversion rate uh, compared to others in their niche. Because um, again, how do you know what it is that yours is comparing to unless you have a chance to compare it to others? Um, so they show you all this fun stuff. Now you may be saying, okay, how do I sign up for this? This there's a link down below in the uh, description. Um, but basically just to show you this, um, the, uh, the way this works is if you go to the link I provided, um, you can just click the little benchmark your account, that little button there. And, uh, you'll be taken to a page that looks like this, just a couple of brief, uh, pieces of information, um, fill that out. And then you're going to import advertising data and basically click that little button there. And then, uh, pops up a little window where you can uh, put in your login to AMWS basically to get your, uh, uh, you're basically signing in and they're going to pull your data and then compare it to others in your niche, which I thought was pretty cool. And I did it myself. Um, one thing that might come up when you get to like that next screen is, uh, if you have just one access to one account, uh, it might look something where you just have one account to click on. If for whatever reason you see multiple merchant IDs, um, then what you could do is just go into Seller Central, click account info, uh, settings account info, I should say, and then look for your merchant token and then find that merchant token and then just compare it to what is on uh, that screen there. Click the one there. And then voila, they're going to prepare your report. And then they say they'll send it to you in 24 hours. And uh, just to warn you, when I did it, I didn't get it quite back in 24 hours. In fact, I think I got an error message, but they were super friendly and helpful um, when I asked for help. And they got it back to me pretty much right away. And it was fun to see, even though, again, I take these things with a grain of salt, but I do like to compare things. Now, just in full disclosure, I am an affiliate of Celix. So if you do go through that link, I might receive an incentive or a uh, uh, some sort of commission. Although this particular thing I'm showing again is free, so uh, it doesn't cost you anything. So it's worth at least checking out. So if that is something that's of interest to you, there'll be a link down below uh, in the description. Um, and so either way, I'd love to know for you, if you sign up for it, leave a uh, comment and let me know what was your score. Um, and if you don't sign up for it, I would just love to know, how do you know if you have a good ACOS or not? Not just compare, and I know some people might come back with, well, I compared to what I was doing yesterday. And I think that's a great way to look at it. But then also I think it is good to know compared to 
others in your niche, your category, I think is a, a good way to look at it because we don't always get those kind of benchmarks. So to have that ability to have that kind of data, I think is a super cool. So, uh, Hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be helpful, click that little thumbs up icon. And uh, again, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. So take care.